All right, what's up guys? In this video, we are going to look at how to go from having a completed built uh, desk lamp to actually rigging it, giving it this cool like skeleton and being able to move it around like it could come to life. Um, this is a few steps forward from the chess pieces, um, but if I open up my original lamp document, uh, you'll see that the lamp is actually pretty easy to build. It's, basic, it's just the basic shapes. Um, if I zoom in on each one, this is basically a hollowed out cylinder that I mostly cut together with a little piece on it. These are just boxes and cylinders that have been extruded and combined together. Um, just all the same basic shapes, just spending a little bit more time playing around to get to know it. <clears throat> so, uh, a few things that might be different. Right now I have what's called the Outliner open. You can do that by going to Window, Outliner. And what this is, is a list of all the different objects that I have in my scene. Um, so each one of these relates to a different piece that I have. Now, um, so open that up because you're going to want to be able to see how your objects are linked together. Now, uh, before we can do that too, one other thing that's just a good thing to do no matter what your uh, scene is, is to delete your object's history. Make them forget what they used to be. Maya, uh, if you boolean an object together, it remembers that it used to be boolean. It used to be like two objects and sometimes that can get complicated. So what you can do is if you select everything in your scene. You can go up to edit, I'm going to zoom in, and then go to delete by type history. Um, and what that does is it cleans up. So look, it already got rid of like a few of the other things uh, that were in my outliner, and now all I have left is the basics of what my document is. So just uh, edit, delete by type, history, cleans up your document. <clears throat> Good practice. Uh, the second thing, third at this point, I don't know, the next thing we want to do uh, before animating is you want to think about how the lamp is going to be able to move, what moves together, and what can move independently. Like what moves when something else moves. For instance, this lampshade would move on its own, but this, uh, this set of cylinders, if I separate them, these cylinders would move together. So anything that is connected to something else, meaning if it moves with something else, you need to combine it. This is really important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these pieces. I'm holding shift to select them. Just just these that would move all at the same time, and I'm going to combine them. This is really important. So if I separate this back to where it used to be, this arm and this joint would move at the same time. Um, I mean, like think how like you're you know if you're forearm moves, your wrist is going to move too, but that doesn't mean your shoulder needs to move. But if your shoulder moves, the whole thing moves. Does that make sense? Anyway, um, I'm going to select these and once again combine them with these. And then lastly, I already combined this, uh, the base, with the, this little part because like this piece couldn't move independently from the base. So I have four main pieces, the base, the arm, the arm, and the lampshade. And now we're ready to build a skeleton. So um, to build it correctly, I'm going to go to a side view. I'm going to hit spacebar and then pick uh, this view where I can see the whole thing from the side. And I'm in, I'm in wireframe mode if I didn't clarify that. Um, I do that by switching between 4 and 5 on the keyboard. Maybe I should like put this uh, earlier. I'll try to edit the video. Um, press, I have to zoom in on it all. And then I want to change my uh, view mode up here in the top left from modeling to rigging. Rigging is the process of creating a skeleton that we can move. If we take a look, I have this new skeleton window in my rigging tool set, and I can start creating joints. Now, we want to create joints. If I click on that, I now have a new create joints tool, which I'm using. We want to create joints from the bottom up, because if the bottom moves, the rest moves with it. But the top can move without the bottom moving. So the bottom is our first uh, joint. So I'm going to create one here at the base. Think of joints as like parts where it could rotate around. It could pivot around. Like my joint is my shoulder, my elbow, my wrist, and then the fingers get complicated. So let's do one there. Let's do one here. And you see it's creating the skeleton now. Let's do one here. Let's do one up here. Not actually here because this pole doesn't move independently. And then I'll end it off with one. And then once I have that whole skeleton built, it's important to hit enter or return on the keyboard to confirm it. And boom. Now if I look over here in my outliner, I have the joints. And now I can see that they're called, or that they're parented to each other. That joint 5 
is parented to joint four, or joint five is the child of joint four. Everything is the child of joint one. And what that means is that if joint one moves, joints two, three, four, and five move with it. Important to get that down. Moving on. Now, I want to start parenting the actual lamp to the joints. So, the lamp head would move with this pivot point. So I'm going to select the lamp head, hold shift, and, and I'm, in, I'm in wireframe mode if I didn't clarify that. Uh, so four is wireframe mode, five is the lampshade mode, or the shaded mode. So click on the lampshade, hold shift, click on the joint that I want it to pivot around. And I'm starting now from the top down. So I built the skeleton from the bottom up, but I'm parenting the model from the top down. So click on the lampshade, hold shift, click on the joint, and I press P to parent. If I make a mistake, Shift P is unparented. Now if I look, Polysurface 5, which is the lampshade, is now the child of joint 4. So let's do the next one. Click on this guy, or let's test that out. If I click on joint 4, this one, I can click it over here in the outliner, and then uh, switch to my rotate tool of E. I should be able to rotate joint 4, and the lampshade rotates too. Check that before you go any further to make sure that you're not like digging yourself a hole. So let's go ahead, click on this guy, hold shift, click on the joint that we want it to be uh, parented to, which is now this guy, and P to parent. Now, we see that polysurface 18 is, is the child of joint 3. If I click on joint 3, I should be able to rotate the whole thing. Boom, this is looking cool. Next one up, hold shift, click the joint we want to pivot around, P to parent. And lastly, select this whole thing, Let's hold shift, click that bottom joint, P to parent. Now, the whole thing should be done if done correctly. <sighs> Space bar up. Go back to my perspective view. And now, again, I'm clicking on the joints alone, just clicking on the joints. I don't want to move or rotate the model anymore. So if I click on the joint one, or I'm sorry, let's start with joint two. I should be able to rotate joint two and everything above it rotates. I would really only rotate this axis, right? That works, joint three, that works, joint four, that works. Boom, I just rigged the skeleton of this lamp. <clears throat> uh, potential problems that could happen um, is that you potentially, uh, maybe you parented in the wrong order. You wanna make sure that the surfaces, the poly surfaces, are the children of the joints, meaning they're underneath. Uh, I've seen students accidentally do it the other way around where they select the joint and parent it to the model um, or the polysurface. Make sure that it's in this sequence, that your joints are the ones that you're selecting. Other things, uh, I've seen students not combine all of the shapes before building the skeleton. And, to, and if that's your problem, you need to unparent things. Again, click on your polysurface, shift P to unparent, and combine everything before you start your parenting process. Um, that's just kind of like you got to go back and do it again. Uh, so make sure that you're following step by step correctly, or else you spend a lot of time. We're at like eight and a half minutes now. Uh, you spend a lot of time, uh, and you wasted it. So a uh, few other things that we could do. Um, as I check my notes. All right. So I'm going to do what's called creating IK handles. Um, an IK handle basically says that the whole thing moves together. The top moves. It all is connected like a body is. Um, really easy to do, but you just got to make sure you're clicking on the joints correctly. If I go up to skeleton, create IK handle. IK is like inertia kinematic or something like that. Um, click on this top joint that moves. Make sure it's on the joint. Joint four, boom, I got that. And then click on the bottom joint that moves, which is this bottom one. And that line should be there and the whole skeleton should be highlighted. Now what that means uh, is that I can move and the whole thing moves together. If I go back out to my perspective view, that's what cre creates the crazy kinematic, the whole thing's moving, the whole thing comes to life. Um, so important things to remember, um, wireframe mode helps you uh, see the insides of, of the skeleton and click on those. It's important to uh, combine all your shapes before you build the skeleton. And then once you've built the skeleton, all the joints, click on them and rotate or move them. Do not rotate the surfaces anymore. Cool. Uh, thanks for following along.